The Witch Chronicles, A Helping Hand, written by Desmond Lynch. <sighs> there, that'll keep us warm. Rest, boy. We have a long journey ahead of us tomorrow. <sighs> yes, tomorrow we climb the mountains. We are finally leaving these accursed lands. In the east, there is Rotunda. That is where we must go. Hmm. hmm. I don't know about the unicorns, but I heard Rotunda is a place of magic. But more important, it is a place of cleanliness. Not like the waste. Clean air, clean water, clean food. There, you can get better. Your skin will grow fresh. Your bones will mend right. Your mind will settle. You'll be as clean as the people in the East. Maybe even more so. <laughs> Me? No, no, I've... This land has taken its toll on me. I remember when I was your age. Skin fresh, eyes clear, but... Over the years, flesh turned to scales, nails turned to claws, teeth turned to... No, it's... It's far too late for me. I am a monster of this land, but it is not too late for you. There's still time. <sighs> Go to sleep, boy. I am weary. Hmm? Well, you're afraid? We cannot take fear into your dreams. They will only haunt you. You're too old for this, but if you will not sleep, then I will tell you a story. Long ago, there was once a boy called Rotuma, a small but curious boy, who one day ran away from home and headed east. The road was weary and lonesome, but none so more than the path that led up the mountain. He climbed and climbed for days on end, and though with each step he never made any distance at all. The wind grew cold and sharp, his heart froze with sorrow, and each step he feared would be his last. Then, when all hope seemed lost, he found a cave, and in that cave there was a fire. Relieved, the boy rushed in, huddled up by the fire. He took it for himself, and it kept him warm. But, little did he know, this was no ordinary fire. He awoke to heavy footsteps. Boom, boom, boom. Frightened, he hid, and out from the cold, in walked Balnor, the fire giant. The giant was cold and weary, but when he saw that his fire had burned to smolder, he screamed in such rage that the mountain itself shook. Who took my fire? The giant cried. A thief from on high, or a rogue from down low, it matters not for I will find you wherever I go. But the mountain shook, and the giant grew nervous. He sighed and picked up his tools and wandered out into the cold. The boy was frightened, but curiosity got the better of him. He followed the giant outside, but the snows began to fall heavy, the wind was cruel, and yet the boy felt that fire in his belly, and so all was well. But he watched the giant before him stagger up the mountain top. Each step grew slower, he began to cough and cry, and before long he fell to his knees, shivering 
boy ran up and cried, Mr. Giant, Mr. Giant, what is wrong? Balnor coughed and said, It is too cold. It hurts, and I am without my fire. I, I am sure to die. The boy grabbed him and carried him back to the cave. There he made a fire, but it proved little warmth to the giant. It is no use, little one. The flame has gone out. I am too weak to carry on my task. Curious, the boy asked, What is your task? The giant pulled out his tools, a hammer and a chisel. Why, it is I who must file down the teeth of the mountain, my mother. Her razor teeth grow large and they may someday pierce the sky above. So I must file them down again and again, but no more. Of those words, a tremendous guilt overwhelmed the boy and the giant drifted off into slumber. He grabbed the tools and set off to work. Belly full of fire, he climbed the highest peaks of the Razor Teeth Mountains, and he began to chisel them away. And so he did, for days on end, until one day, he saw something that caught his eye. A weary traveler found himself atop the mountain, lonesome and cold, just as he was. Death circled around from on high, and the boy took pity on him. He abandoned his work, met the traveler, and with his warm hands he led him down the mountain, on east to a land of plenty. The traveler thanked him, but the boy ran off, for he still had work to do on high in the mountains. Once more he chiseled away and... Once more he spotted the weary traveler. Pity filled his heart, and so he too helped his traveler down the mountain. Back and forth he went, and while he tried to work, a traveler would always appear. So it was for many a year. He would run back and forth, never resting long enough to see his surroundings. And while the boy grew to a man, he helped the travelers down the mountain. When the mountain grew each day, its teeth grew sharp and jagged, and the sky grew closer each year. He chiseled away, but he was always distracted by the others, seeking help. Then, one day, the boy grew old. The muscles he had grown began to sag. His hair that had grown long and free turned white and began to shorten. Each step his bones ached, the wind began to chill as the fire in his belly began to die out. Then, one day, as he reached the peak of the mountain, tools in his hands began to shake, and they could not strike true. The cold consumed him and he fell to his knees. Oh, silent, and then, boom, boom, boom. He heard footsteps. He reared his head, and there he was. Balnor, the giant, had returned. The old man began to weep, I am sorry, Mr. Giant. It was I who stole your fire. I grew guilty and tried to carry your burden. But I was not strong enough. The giant smiled. He kneeled down to face the old man and, placing a delicate hand on his shoulder, he said, I know, boy. But it is not a burden, it is a duty, mine and mine alone. Your duty is there. The giant pointed down on below and with sore eyes, the old man gazed upon the land he had led the travelers to. What was once a clear green pasture had grown into a settlement and that settlement 
finest city man has ever made. For Tunda, the old man wept and grew weak. The giant carried him down the mountain and laid him to rest in the city, before once more climbing up atop the mountain and carrying on with his work. Thus is the end of Utuma, the curious. <laughs> Do you like that story? You never know. Let me see the giant tomorrow. He's asleep. <sighs> Finally. How many years ago did I hear that one? It was so different back then. So sad. What is the use of sad stories? The world is sad enough. I... I do not know what awaits us. My boy, I have seen horrible things, and I wonder if there is even good left in this world. I don't know if we'll find the help we need. I don't know where to go, but I hope it is safe. In the very least, we shall go to these lands so that I may grant you a better death than your cow will deprive you of. Sleep well, my son. Sleep well.